just wanted to take you through um, basically some, some idea as to what to wear. So we have on our very bottom our base layer. We use merino wool as our base layer basically because wool, even when wet, will keep you warm still and it dries an awful lot quicker than some of the other products that you've got out there. So if you're hot and sweaty, it will keep you warm. Okay, so I have a top and a pair of under trousers in merino wool. Layering it's all about you as an individual, how much you need to keep you warm and to keep you cool, of course. So if you wanted another layer on top, polypropylene, this really makes me really a bit too hot. So I would rather have two merino base layers um, than a polypropylene layer. But I've also got a polypropylene pair of over trousers that go over my merino wool. On top of that, I will have a fleece layer on the top, on my body part, I'm talking. So I have a fleece jumper that keeps my arms warm and just generally keeps my body warm. Now, depending on how cold the day is, I will have a body warmer relay also made out of fleece over the top again. Okay, on top of that, I will have my outer wind coat. And as you saw from some of our other videos, I also have a wind jacket that I can put underneath as well, so that if it's a relatively oh, a warmer day, but windy, it keeps uh, the, the wind away from me. And also allows me to sweat when I'm working on the snowshoes, it keeps me, keeps it warm. Okay, so the jacket goes on top. That's my top base layers. Bottom base layers, as I said, merino wool trousers, perhaps a polypropylene, and also trousers that go over the top. The average skier will have an all or nothing, so they might have one base layer and a really thick pair of trousers on the top. What we tend to do is have a couple of trousers base layers, maybe two pairs of merino wool and a polypropylene, and then a pair of light windproof trousers on the top that have air vents in them. So if you see on my trousers, have air vents so that I can let the heat out. Snowshoeing and cross-country skiing exerts a lot more energy than perhaps downhill skiing does. So where you need to be a bit warmer. In our backpack, we have what we consider to be a dry layer and a very warm layer. So I have two things, both made with down, I have another body warmer, so if my clothes have got wet, I can swap them out for a nice warm body, le body warmer body layer. And also, I have a down jacket. When it tucks up to a nice size, zips up tight, hood keeps me nice and warm. Okay? So that's my main body areas, my legs and my body. What I forgot to tell you, or what I've saved, is the other parts, the pieces that stick out. Your feet. You need at least two to three really good wool pairs of wool socks. If you had a problem with your shoes, you can actually walk in the snow with your, with your socks on, if you had a problem with your shoes. It's highly unlikely. A good pair of waterproof shoes, Gore-Tex boots would be good as well. Okay, I have a buff or a snood, which I can put up and pull up, it covers my face. I have a waterproof hat, comes down over my ears and my buff tucks up into it. I also have a woollen hat with a fleece lining for a dry but cold days. Finally, gloves. I have a light pair of gloves for underneath my outer fur lined wet gloves. 
Okay, as you can see, in this huge pile, it's an enormous amount of clothes to have. But as I remember, some of the layers I keep in my pack so that if they get wet, I've got something warm and dry to put on. But it's all about keeping you safe. Whatever you need, however many layers you need to keep you warm, is what's important out here. So down here, I have a bucket of water that's been out here for three hours and it's very cold and it's about uh, five degrees centigrade so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my wool socks 70% blend and you can, as you can see I have a number of pairs on into the water then I'm going to uh, basically go for a walk and uh, the explanation should uh, should come uh, right okay so here we go <gasps> okay so that's good and wet and good and cold <gasps> Okay, so to court, um, to, rather than court uh, hypothermia, what we need to do is make sure that we're blotting the water with the snow in here. Uh, we take our boots off because we don't want the cold water freezing in our boot, and we walk in our socks. And by walking in our socks, we should be able to get uh, the explanation that we need. And what happens is, as you can see, the ice sticks to the outside of the sock, blots the water, and your feet end up with sort of ice encrusted uh, uh, woolen boots. I'm going to go take a, a walk now to squeeze this last of this moisture out of my, uh, uh, after my socks and you should be able to understand um, this is actually a preventative measure against hypothermia and also a preventative measure against frostbite and it works very very well. Okay, well that's been about, only about 50 yards, 25 to 30 maybe yards, and uh, as you can see all the water has actually nearly all blotted out of the boot now, and if I lift my boot you can see that there's nothing draining out of the bottom of it. Um, my feet aren't uh, cold and they're not particularly wet, and another five minutes uh, walking um, with this on will actually uh, blot out the rest of the water and uh, I will save my feet rather than uh, them freezing off in icy cold boots. That's it. Thank you.